This video is brought to you by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best each and every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now, enjoy the show. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. This week on the show, the impact of Hurricane Sandy will be with us for months to come, including on the shores of Assateague Island. We'll share our extended ground tour with the National Park Service to see how the beach and bayside were affected and how beloved wildlife is already bouncing back. Plus, just the threat of the storm was enough to put a hunt to a halt. We'll see how sportsmen were squeezing in a last minute deer hunting opportunity just hours before the storm. And an unfortunate snake gets some TLC. See how our outdoors crew performed this reptile rescue. Right now on Outdoors Del Marva. One of the benefits of hosting this show is that I get to put in the biggest fish. It's a beautiful brown trout. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. And now, here are Mike Parker and Captain Willie Dykes. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. And I'm Mike Parker, and we're happy you could join us for another week of adventures. Well, Willie, it kind of goes without saying. It's been an eventful few weeks. Of course, we had Hurricane Sandy pass across Del Mar a few weeks ago. Uh, this past week, we had the big election. And oh, yeah, right here in our itsy bitsy part of the world, the outdoors realm of things, boy, we are now right in the midst of some of the most exciting hunting opportunities of the entire year. Yeah, Mike, you know, the month of November is a special time for waterfowlers and, of course, our local deer hunters, as our friends in Delaware are harvesting some nice big bucks right now yeah. during the shotgun season. We are getting word of some big bucks and a lot of dough taken, and, of course, the shotgun is king in the first state, so coming up in our next episode, Willie, we'll have plenty of coverage of this opening week of the Delaware shotgun season. But as we start off this week, we did want to turn the clock back just slightly to right before Hurricane Sandy was starting to stir up the coast. And this superstorm was already threatening to put a halt to a hunt on Assateague Island. The morning began as many do for sportsmen on the shores of Assateague, first letting out a few pounds of pressure from the tires of our four-wheel drive and then slowly but surely venturing out into the oversand vehicle zone. But on this morning, the Saturday prior to the arrival of Hurricane Sandy, there was an added sense of urgency. We're trying to sneak in a hunt before Sandy's arrival. Uh, we're already feeling some of the wind sitting where we're at, but um, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll have some luck this morning. <laughs> okay, Mike, well, let's use this today. Hunting alongside Assateague's chief ranger, Ted Morlock, we began the trek behind the dunes into the backcountry areas that many never explore. But it's where both the island's Sika and whitetail deer are known to inhabit. And the perfect spot for this muzzleloader hunt scheduled for the last week of October into the first weekend of November. <coughs> Attempts at bugling to lure in a Sika don't seem to be paying off. But while it's difficult to see through the thick trees ahead, Ted does pass on a small white-tailed buck, which must have winded us in Sandy's now swirling gusts. You know, one thing that's kind of different about hunting deer out here on Assateague Island is to get out into some of this backcountry, it can be kind of rough terrain. You're dealing with salt marshes and these transition lands from the marshes into the forest again. And uh, one of the things that helps you out <laughs> is the horse trails. They're all over the place. And you guessed it, after just a few more hours, this hunt is being cut short. <sighs> yeah, it's, uh, Sandy's unfortunately gonna close the beach here to, tonight, essentially. Uh, we'll have to close it, because we expect overwash to begin this afternoon and tonight. And when we get reopened, we're not sure, but it sounds like from the predictions, it's gonna be a few days, so. Uh, you know, it's muzzleloader season. Uh, they only get a week, and um, 
it'll be a good chunk of that week's gonna be uh, taken up by Sandy. And as we'd come to find out in the days ahead. Yeah, parks closed. It's gonna be closed for a definite period of time here. Really? The predictions yeah, would come true. And due to safety concerns, Assateague would not be able to reopen for the remaining week of this muzzleloader hunt. Now, even though Ted and I weren't successful with the deer that morning, on the way back to the ranger station, we noticed that we weren't alone. Other sportsmen, surf fishermen, were out and about trying to squeeze in some last-minute fun ahead of the storm. Still waiting to catch the rock. Haven't caught a rock out here yet, but some drums, some flounder. Try to catch some fish before they kick us off. I just like being out here fishing. We've uh, been playing it for a couple weeks already, so uh, it was in the book, so we're here. And as we headed back to the check-in station, a requirement for deer hunters on Assateague, we found that some others had been successful. I was bored sitting in my stand, <laughs> daydreaming of everything, and then suddenly this it just popped out and it was over. Well, we were going to be here all week, and we got chased out of here by the hurricane. So today's our last day, and we'll head home tomorrow. So there's not much we could do about the weather. I had two doe walk by me and decided to take one because you're allowed one in the season. Now to lose days of a hunt to bad weather isn't only disappointing for hunters. The muzzleloader season is also part of the National Park Service's wildlife management plan on Assateague. I'm going to have to go 64. Sorry. <laughs> it helps maintain an abundant but still healthy and manageable deer herd. And every deer harvested is also an opportunity for yeah, research. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna slice the right side of the mouth back far enough that I can get a good look at the teeth. And we use the teeth to age the animal. So what I'm looking for here is the, the first of all, the number of teeth, and then uh, particularly the uh, this third tooth. So I'm gonna count from left to right. There's one, two, three, four, five and we have a sixth tooth back there so that puts the animal at between a year and a half and two years and two and a half uh, two and a half years well, Willie, if there is a silver lining after Hurricane Sandy's storm clouds, it's that since the muzzleloader hunt was cut short, there's going to be plenty more deer to harvest during the shotgun season later this month on Assateague and also the bonus hunt in January. Also want to mention that both the National Seashore and the State Park have reopened by now, but visitors will notice some cleanup over the next couple of weeks. That's right, Mike. And coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, we'll return to the shores of Assateague for a ground tour to see how the island and its beloved wildlife weathered the effects of Hurricane Sandy. But first, did you know? While Hurricane Sandy had some effect on Assateague, its impact is minimal compared to another superstorm of the past. We'll revisit some history when we come back. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism, Shorts Marine, Shooter's Choice, Sean Mann Outdoors, Wink Sporting Goods, and Goody's Marine. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. What other, what other guy hunt? Did you know? Hurricane Sandy's effect on Assateague Island are minimal compared to the hurricane of 1933. This superstorm actually formed the inlet that separates Assateague from Ocean City, Maryland. Did You Know is sponsored by North Bay Marina. Our fascination with modern day Assateague Island dates back decades. So when Hurricane Sandy passed through, it didn't take long for folks to start asking questions. Many wanted to know if the island was going to stay open during the storm, which it did not. 
Instead, for a few days following the storm, visitors were greeted at the entrance by National Park Rangers, who politely asked them to check back in a few days. And, of course, folks had concerns about the island's population of wild horses, which have become a beloved symbol of the island. And while the general public would have to wait until week's end for parts of the island to reopen, we didn't when I joined the National Park Service for a very first look at Hurricane Sandy's impact. For the first time since Sandy made landfall, on Wednesday, authorized vehicles were allowed to cross the Verrazano Bridge leading onto Assateague. And ironically, while earlier concerns had kept this bridge closed due to the possibility of storm damage, inspectors found no problems here, but did end up closing the neighboring walking bridge, which did have some minor damage. So there must have been some very significant wave action here. Rachelle Dagnot with the National Park Service was also assessing the storm's impact for the first time. Yet as we rode along, she made it clear that on a natural island, what happens after a natural event like Sandy isn't all to be considered damage. When we talk about the island, we're talking about changes that we expect to occur, impacts that change the environment. When we talk about our developed areas, we're talking about buildings. And parking lots, like this one on the island's bayside, reduced to uneven chunks and boardwalks used for launching canoes and kayaks. In some cases, it will be repair and reposition. In some cases, it will be removal and replacement. On our way to inspect the ocean side of the island, we finally see one of the encouraging signs we've been looking for. Resilient wildlife like this white-tailed deer have weathered the storm. And the same goes for the herd of wild horses, so dear to so many. Now, the, the horses have been here for 300 years. They've not only survived that period, they have thrived during that period. It will take some time to determine where each of the bands is and, uh, and what's occurred uh, while we've been gone. On the coast, wooden fences around the dunes have been both covered and exposed by high winds. And white sand has been blown from the surface, leaving heavier black grains in its place. And what looks like a seashell scavenging paradise also bears its scars. Years ago, someone with very good intentions strapped together a bunch of old car tires to form an artificial reef offshore. Well, nature had other plans. And you can see there are now hundreds of these old tires that have come to rest on the beach. There is also a more natural history lesson here. Evidence that barrier islands like Assateague are living, constantly shifting entities. Unearthed are old oyster shells that would have grown here when this Atlantic coast was once part of the bay, but has now shifted west. While it could take weeks to clean up trash and debris from beaches and roads, Sandy's impact on Assateague isn't as bad as perhaps it could have been. For visitors, a different way to view this wild sanctuary. For its inhabitants, it's simply what comes naturally. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, even cold-hearted creatures deserve some warm, cozy care every once in a while. See how our outdoors crew got tangled up in this reptile rescue. You're watching Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. This is Outdoors Delmarva, presented by Gateway Subaru higher standards. Well, you know, Willie, one thing about putting this show together week after week is that we're always out there constantly grabbing new pieces of video, trying to figure out where they go, where they fit, and sometimes we just don't quite know what to do with something right away. <laughs> That's right, Mike. It's like uh, back in the warmer days, uh, back in the days when I had a beard, Chopper Chuck and I found something right here on the grounds of WBOC that required some immediate assistance, and we decided to give Mike a bit of a surprise. All right, well, let's, let's show Mike your surprise here. Okay. Check this out. You found a snake and you brought it into the building. <laughs> yes, I remember this moment well a couple of months ago. <laughs> Judging by the look on my face, I guess everybody out there can tell I'm not a really big fan of snakes. But in this particular case, I knew you guys were just trying to lend a little assistance. Yeah, this guy was in trouble. He got caught up in some trash and we had to help him out. Yeah, we're going to say this is a snake rescue. Come on, dude. It's a snake rescue. 
No, this is ridiculous. He's yeah, just cut, yeah, cut the basically bolt cut it away first. Got to yeah. cut it. What do we have here? I think it is a common northern water snake. He was at the edge yeah, of the retention right there. pond. We saw him uh, rolling and roiling, uh, and uh, well, until we got a little closer, we saw that he was caught up in this netting. Be careful with those scissors, Chuck. Well, I am. I'm, I have a surgeon's precision here. Yeah, see. Come around here, Mike, if you can. See, see how it's biting into his flesh right there? He's probably wondering what the heck is going on here. Almost got it. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Cat Willie. Almost got it. Oh, yeah, you got it, man. Ah, that's it. Free as a bird. Okay, so Look that's that. one. Look at that. Cool. Look at that. Okay, so we got him. Now let's get the let's yeah. get this guy right here. Yeah, there you go. I got him. Yep. That is your free snake. Like a brand new snake. All right, now what's going to happen here, Mike, is when Willie goes to release him, he's going to show his gratitude by turning around and biting the heck out of him. Well, it was a nice little thing you guys did that afternoon, thanks to Willie and Chuck. And much to my delight, the world now has one more snake in it. Yeah, before we let him go, we told him to steer clear of you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for thinking of me. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, if you're looking for adventure with a side of style, well, we found it. Check out the brand new 2013 Subaru XV Crosstrek. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker, and we're back here again with our friends at Gateway Subaru, located on Route 13 in Del Mar, Maryland. Higher standards when it comes to buying that new car. It is Customer Appreciation Day here at Gateway Subaru. Take a look around, the place is packed. People are learning about all sorts of community partners. The Wicomico County Humane Society is here. The kids are having fun. We've got dogs running around, and of course, People are taking a look at the whole lineup of 2013 Subaru models. Joining us right now is Drew Hazencope with Gateway Subaru. Drew, always a pleasure. Thanks, Mike. What an event. Tell me what inspired this. Well, it was a way that we could give back to the community, say thank you for coming in, and giving us a business that we enjoyed the last two and a half years here. And what better way with the food, dogs, and lots of fun. Well, I'll tell you what, as we take a look at the new lineup of 2013 Subarus, the one that's catching my eye, and a lot of people around here is the new XV Crosstrek. It's getting a lot of buzz in every magazine, every publication that takes a review at it is loving what they see. And you've got a guy that can tell us all about it, right? Absolutely. And here he is, Aaron Levinko with Gateway Subaru, also known as our XV Crosstrek specialist. This is the new XV Crosstrek. It actually is the most fuel efficient crossover in America. It's getting 33 miles to the gallon on the highway. It gets you just up high enough. We actually just got back from an off-road event, and we were taking this thing over bumps and everything else. Unbelievable. Took on a 45-degree side slope, low center of gravity. It'll take you wherever you want to go. Sand on the beach, out to the mountains. Car is going to be the perfect companion in all your adventures. The XV Crosstrek is about as rugged as you'd expect from a Subaru. Man, it's got some style, too. Well, Aaron, one thing that's popping out of me already is the interior. Really nice. With all the limited trim level, you're going to get the leather seats. You've got the automatic climate control, just like setting a, setting a thermostat at your house. You've also got standard Bluetooth, so you get the hands-free calling. Don't have to worry about it. you got USB inputs, auxiliary inputs to get all the latest music. Also, you're going to get the all-weather package. Keep the heated front seats. you get the heated side mirrors, as well as the heated windshield wiper de-icers. In other words, the XV Crosstrek makes it easy to get just about anywhere and do it in comfort. And a car like this is designed for people who play hard, and Subaru makes it easy with features like this rear bumper guard. And Mike, for all the toys that don't fit inside the truck, you turn around and you've got 1,500 pounds of towing capacity as well. It's perfect for a couple of jet skis or a small fishing boat. It's a go-getter. Well, I'm really impressed with this new XV Crosstrek. Makes a great addition to the line of Subarus here in 2013. Drew Hazencope, thanks for having us. Customer Appreciation Day. It's really every day here at Gateway Subaru. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. Thanks for coming out. We enjoy having the show out here, and you're absolutely right. It couldn't be a better time to buy a Subaru. All right, if you're looking for a car that's safe, 
reliable, and of course, comes with that all-important symmetrical all-wheel drive. Look no further than our friends here at Gateway Subaru, located on Route 13 in Del Mar, Maryland. Higher standards. And we'll be right back. Good girl, good girl. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, your latest viewer videos and pictures. Outdoors Del Marva viewer pictures are sponsored by Shorts Marine. This is Outdoors Del Marva, presented by Gateway Subaru. Higher standards. Sponsored by Ocean City Tourism. Shorts Marine, Shooter's Choice, Sean Mann Outdoors, Wink Sporting Goods, and Goody's Marine. And now, on to those viewer videos and pictures. Once again, our friend Chuck Coverdale from Milford took time to get some viewer venture cam footage at the recent Chincoteague Oyster Festival. Uh, this event grows bigger each season, and they had a beautiful day for it this year. As always, the locally inspired oyster cuisine was the main attraction down on Chincoteague Island. John Lane from Cambridge has been out with his compound bow this season and harvested this nice four-pointer. Our buddy Dave Seacott from Dorchester County was trick-or-treating on Halloween. This buck got tricked and Dave got the treat. So until next time, for Mike Parker, I'm Captain Willie Dykes reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva.